Welcome! I'm so glad you're here. I'm Gila Ross, parenting educator and coach, author of Living Beautifully and host of the Confident Parent podcast, bringing you the content you need to bring more ease, joy and love into your parenting so that you can show up as the parent you want to be to your children. I want to share with you a win and a fail. I'll share with you a couple of, of stories that happened over the past week for me. We have a little tap outside our house for anyone that has been there in the days where we used to have people over for Shabbat meals. You know that I have certain little people in my house that the minute the front door opens, they zoom out and they turn that tap on as fast as they can. And I said to, to one of them, I, I, they switched the tap on, they were playing with, with the water and I said, switch the tap off. They just weren't listening. I thought, you know what, let me listen to them and see what's going on. And I said, what are you doing? And they said, we're fixing the mains. And what I realized was that a few days earlier, we'd been taking a walk and there was a burst pipe along, the, along where we had walked. And they saw these, these guys that were fixing it, right? And you could see like the water was gushing through the pavement. And obviously when you're a five-year-old kid, that's like one of the most exciting things you could see. What I realized when I stopped, stopped, stopped to actually listen to them was that they weren't just messing around and not listening. They were actually reenacting that situation. So I said to them, but you know, the first step that you actually have to do is you have to switch off the water from the mains before you can fix it. And they were like, really? Like they weren't sure if I was having them on or not. I was like, yeah, yeah, they do. They have a special place where they fix it off. And I showed them where it was in our house. And it was amazing because I heard them. They were then able to hear me. And because we played part of that role play, they switched off the wall. So they kept playing. And that was just a small, a small win. The second thing that I'm going to share with you, I told you I'll share with you one win and one fail. Tonight, before I came on this class, one of my children gave me a real, real run for my money. I don't know if any of you ever have kids like that. And I want to tell you something. Like, I felt terrible because I'm like, here's my kids giving me a run for my money. I was supposed to be giving parenting classes for it, for goodness sakes. And afterwards, you know, I thought to myself, look, we're all human, right? And even, even though I'm supposed to be giving parenting classes, there are times as parents that I think, you know, our kids push our buttons and we, we may not react in the best way that we want, but there's always time to fix it. So if you feel like, you know, you're, you're putting things in place and things are great, that's fantastic. If you're coming on these classes and you're feeling like, oh, I've got so much more to do, that's also great. Because the, the, the more, the, as, uh, keep on going and we keep trying, that's all. That's all we are supposed to do as parents. And I'll tell you one thing, our kids know that we're trying. They see that we're trying and they're not going to say anything now, but it makes an impression on them. So before we continue, does anyone else want to share anything from this week? Anything that they tried? Anything they didn't try? I tried saying to Zara, look at me when she just ignores me. Because quite often when I'm, I'm talking to her, asking her to do something, she's just like staring at her toy or at the TV or whatever. She just ignores me. <laughs> so I tried, look at me, and it actually worked. She did actually then look at me and listen to me. And you mentioned that last week. So thanks for that. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. I'm, glad to, I'm glad to hear you know what, it's, it's sometimes it's even the small things that we do that make, make a difference. For the past few weeks, we have been talking about when our kids don't listen, right? And I said, we are going to get to it. So this is the week that we are going to start getting to setting limits, okay? So we've spent the past time together talking a little bit about parenting goals and also setting the foundation of what, we, what we've been trying to do is give our kids our energy when they are doing the right things or even when they're not messing up by the act of recognition by checking in on them and giving them uh, and appreciating them for just who they are and, and just showing that you know we love them by experiential recognition by creatively pointing out their successes and also by the proactive recognition by, by giving them gratitude for when they are not breaking the rules but and here's the but. For most kids, this is not going to be enough. It's not enough just to give the positives. We have to also 
we also have to set limits. And at, at this point, we're going to talk about how to do that. So let me give you an analogy. I don't know if any of you are familiar, but there, let's say someone has a back problem and they try different things and they realize that their back is hurting. So there's something called a two-sided back brace. And basically what it is made is made of two sides. And when they put them together and they put the pressure in the right place, it relieves the tension and the pain in the back. Now imagine if the person is using it and they're getting relief, pain relief. And then one morning they wake up and they can only find half of the, of the back brace. And they only put half of the back brace on. It's not going to do it. So that's what these, these, half, these, these two halves are. On the one hand, we have the, the half, the stand that we said that we are going to give energy for positives, right? That's half of, of the brace. But the other half of the brace is that we, are, we, we also said that the stand three, that we are going to be clear about setting limits. Okay, so how, how are we going to set limits? What happens when, when, the ki when our kids break the rules? Now, some of you may already be, be seeing changes in your children. You may already be implementing these things and seeing that your children are listening better or, or cooperating more or happier or calmer, whatever it is. And that's great. But some of you, not yet. And that, that, that's, that's fine because this is where, where the next part is. So we are, we are going to tell them what's going to happen. Okay. But before we tell them what's going to happen, let me explain to you what we are going to do. So I'm going to ask you, anyone here familiar with timeout? I think it's safe to say we're all familiar with timeouts, right? Now, some people may love them and some people may think not effective. Okay. Now, if you think about it, every punishment that we sort of give our kids, every consequence that we give our kids, at the end of the day, boils down to, to a time out. Because if let's say you tell your child, you know what, because you said X, Y, Z, you are having half an hour less of screen time. You're taking your child, you're giving them a time out from what they really want to do. So we are going to learn how to use it effectively. Now, a lot of times time outs don't work. And, and why that is, is because the power of a timeout is only powerful if our time in is effective, right? Now, what do I mean by that? The time in, it doesn't mean that we have to be playing with them and talking to them and being with them the whole time. It's fine for them to play independently and we have stuff to do. Like we, we get that, right? Like that's not what a powerful time in means. A powerful time means, means in those moments where we're checking in and we're giving them energy, when we're saying, I see that you're, you, you're coloring in that picture. I see that you're doing your maths. I see that you gave the baby a toy, whatever it is, right? Like those, those moments where we tell our children, I see that you're doing that. So th those are the powerful time ins that I'm talking about. And again, what we're doing is we're, we're taking that energy Energy that we would feel if our kid was messing up, if our kid was not being great, and we're transferring it to the times when our kid is being great. So imagine that frustration you would feel if your kids were fighting over the same toy, and now they're like playing happily or they're ignoring each other, and you give them that. that, that I see that you know you're 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 breathing in the same air in the same room as each other. That's fantastic. It shows me how kind you can be. It shows me etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, right again. You feel free to switch the language as you want. So when that's what we're going to keep on doing is remembering to power up our time ins, right? Make them powerful. Give our kids the nutrients, the, the energy, the nutrition that they need in, in, those, in those positive ways. And then we're going to introduce something that's called a reset, okay? Now, what, what is a reset? So basically what a reset is when a child crosses a line, and again, it's us as parents and in each home as for your child, you decide what the rules are, but whenever they cross a line, that's a reset. And you can use those words, but before you start doing, we're going to have a conversation. We're going to get to what that conversation is going to be, but let me explain the concept to you first. That's a reset, a reset. Now what happens during a reset is that you, the parent, take your attention away from your child. So it could be something as simple as saying, no, that's a reset. And you turn around and your, your attention is diverted for, from them. And you as the parent decide how long it's going to have to be. And it doesn't have to be long to be effective. Let me give you an analogy. Let's just say I, um, I 
you know, I'm not particularly careful about the speed limit on my road. And one day I get a letter in the post and they say, you know what, we are going to start monitoring this road. And any person that dr drives over the speed limit is going to get a ticket. And I think to myself, ha, they always say that. And I keep on driving down the road, 35 miles an hour, whatever it is. And what happens is the first day I'm, I get in my car, I drive down the road and I'm driving 35 miles and, and I get stopped by a police officer. And the police officer says, I'm really sorry, you're over the speeding limit. And he hands me a fine. And I look at the fine and it's a two pound fine. And I think to myself, two pounds, who cares about that? And I throw it down and I drive off again, ignore the speed limit and I get pulled over again. And again, the, the, the police officer, he's not emotionally involved. He hands me out his ticket. And again, I look at it and it's a two pound and it doesn't make an impact on me. And some, and what, hap, what, what suddenly starts to filter into my brain is that this is really, really annoying. I can't get anywhere because I keep going over the speed limit and I keep getting these annoying little, little fines. They're little, they're two pound fines, but they're annoying. They're stopping me from going where I'm getting and, and they're starting to add up at the end of the day. I could have got myself, you know, nice coffee or nice new outfit or whatever else because they're, they're starting to accumulate on, on my, on my, on my, um, on my driver's uh, passenger seat. So I decided to go into plan B. Now for some kids and for some people, plan B means, okay, I'm going to obey the, the, the speed limit. But I am not such a person. So I'm going to go into plan B and I'm going to say, you know what? The next time I get pulled over, I'm going to try my luck. So I start pleading and I say, please, come on. I was only, you know, and the police officer doesn't care. He says, really sorry, over the speed limit, hands me a fine. Next time I start getting angry. I'm like, come on, whatever, losing my temper with the police officer. He doesn't care. All he says, maybe all he says to me is, I see this is really frustrating for you. And he keeps giving me those fines. And eventually it goes, it, it dawns into my brain, this is happening, right? This is happening. And there's not much I can do about it at this point, right? Like every time I go over the speed limit, I get stopped and I start, and, and I get this little annoying fine, which the fine on itself isn't that annoying, but it's adding up and it's also disturbing, right? Like it's stopping me from getting to what I'm getting. And eventually, it, you know, I realized, okay, I got to stop, um, 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 going by the speed limit. And I start driving, um, you know, at 29 or 28 um, uh, miles an hour down the road. And I realize this is amazing. I'm getting to where I want to get to. I'm not, I'm not getting fines, right? And it's all good. And what's the analogy is, the analogy here is as well, is that our kids most of the time are not out to get us, right? And they're not, they're trying to get us, but some, whatever it is, either they, either they, it's too hard for them to, to follow the, to, to control the impulses or they have, to, you know, they're too intense or whatever it is. But we as the parents are going to help them learn that self-control. Now, what happens is we don't have to give big consequences. We don't have to give big punishments when, when, when our kids mess up. But we are, if what we're going to see with, with, with what happened with the speeding fines is that because it was consistent, every single time you went over the speed limit, you got stopped, right? And the police officer didn't care, right? He didn't care what you said. No excuses, no, oh, you know what? You're right. It was only two miles over the hour, so you're good. The more we are consistent, the quicker our kids are going to learn that, right? That every time I step over the line, every time I break a rule, every time I do something that I'm not supposed to do, there is this reset. It's a small consequence. It's not a big deal, right? It's not a huge thing. And we, as the parents, get to decide how big the reset is. It can be short, right? It can be, you could tell your child, that's a reset. And as soon as I see that you're taking your reset quietly, right? Again, we're going to introduce how, that, how to have that conversation with your child before you start introducing it to them. But when, when we tell, when we, uh, some kids will immediately like settle down and, and, and they'll have the reset and they, and they, go, they get right back into it. But some kids will, will fuss, right? And we tell them the, the sooner you take your reset quietly, the sooner your reset's over, right? And we get to tell them. And as soon as the reset over, it's right away back into, into success. So much so that you can tell them, I see that you took your reset so nicely. That shows me how much self-control you have, right? Right away, it will stop the behavior. There's a reset, there's a timeout, and then right back in, it's time and it's back, it's back into the game. Again, it's the same, it's the same, same analogy as a video game. As soon as a child messes up, they get their consequence, whatever it is, they lose points or whatever it is, and then it's the game, the game continues. The same thing with is what we're doing with this reset here. Do we have a minute? Should I 
should we tell should i tell you how to practically put it in or should we leave that for, for next week okay i'm gonna give you one more week for this coming week let's just keep on focusing on making those time in powerfuls and again it doesn't mean we have to spend all that time with our kids if you want to spend all that time with the kids great but i'm saying if you're fi finding that you know that is pressurizing because life is pressurizing especially if you have more than one kid that needs your attention it, it is pressurizing it's not about spending endless amount of time with them it's about giving them the short energetic bursts of energy from us as as frequently as we can throughout throughout the day and making it making it powerful Okay, have, we're going to work on a real action plan on how to implement it for next week. But I think this week is just going to lay the groundwork on it. Again, if when, when they do mess up, just keep doing what you're, what you're doing and just, just mi mi minimize as, as little fuss as possible. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen. I'd love to hear your thoughts, your feedback, your questions for future episodes. And please take a moment, think about someone else who might benefit from this and forward it on to them. If you enjoyed this podcast, you'll love my book, Living Beautifully, for more insights on how to bring meaning, joy, love into your life based on timeless Jewish wisdom. Thank you. Have a wonderful day and please may take a moment to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss out.